All right, guys, welcome to part two of this week's Yawa. If this is your first time to the channel, you're just finding this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and then go back and watch part one first. It will make more sense as we progress through this. Yawa. Yawa. Series. All right, so. But I wanted to mention because we forgot to mention in part one, so all of you tuning in for part two, get a little insider information. We just finished recording our first ad, which is part of uh, our podcast. So that means all of these Yawas that are on YouTube are now getting uploaded and should be available on Spotify and Apple, Apple Podcast, podcast mm -hmm. as well. So um, I know a lot of requests have been, hey, are all the rest of your Yawas gonna go up on those podcast platforms because I like to listen on our drives, things like that. and. We've been kind of slow to get that advertisement recorded so that it can get incorporated into those podcasts and then get posted. So that's done now. It's done and done. Uh, everybody always wants to know, uh, this evening I am drinking Baker's, mm, Baker's 7, I believe is what you call that. Yep, bourbon. It is a 107 proof and whew, it's a little bit hot. Some people love that. I am. Uh, I like the little lighter proof. So I threw one ice cube in this. Otherwise, I normally drink things neat. But it's got some really good flavor. This was actually a gift from a gentleman who shares the last name of the bottle. So um, thank you very much for that again. And Cat is switching things up because of the refresca shortage in the world. I know, I love my refrescas. If you also have tried the Corona refrescas, especially the guava lime, which is like my absolute favorite, uh, put it in the comments below because yeah, it nobody is- nobody likes those coconut ones. No. Don't even make them anymore. But the passion fruit ones are okay too, but the guava lime are the best. Um, so if you've tried them and like them, put that in the comments below and we will be hoping that Corona gets back to making those soon. Because these Bar Bartles and James watermelon minty things are, Okay. Meh. 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 Okay. Without further ado, let's go. This question is from Michael D. Powlitz. It's a long one, so bear with me. I'm going to try and read it um, fairly coherently on Facebook. Ethan and Kat, thank you both so much for the plethora of content you put out. It's an extremely valuable resource for someone like me who is attempting to train their first canine hunting partner, an 11 month old Vishla. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you're very welcome. And training your first bird dog is really awesome and it's quite an accomplishment. So my question this week is about the tone function on my dog's e-collar. In your opinion, what is the best way to utilize the tone function during training or hunting? I've seen videos of other people using the tone function for recalling their dogs or training the tone sound to be a marker for positive reinforcement from an extended distance. However, I'm not completely sold on either of these ideas and value professional opinion far more than theirs. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Any input would be greatly appreciated. Well, we appreciate you trusting us and asking for our opinions. Uh, we use DT systems callers and all of the models that we use actually don't have tone, but we know how it's used. So I want to start this one by saying if you are working through and don't already, I'm trying to see what it's he has a mic. tone function. No, no, no. What are you trying to work through? Um, I was going to say that if you're working through training your own dog, following oh. our videos, you should check out patreon.com slash standing stone kennels, which is where Kat and I can offer you the absolute most powerful and beneficial tool that we have in our tool bag, which is our ability to read dogs and dog training sessions. So you need to jump on over there. Check that out. Um, we have multiple different tiers that allow you to just ask questions on the regular or shoot videos of your sessions and send them to us. That is going to be the most beneficial way to work through that. We actually have a couple of other tiers too for people. Uh, one is our VIP tier, which allows you to have phone call conversations set up. Mm -hmm. um, and our newest tier by popular demand is our live training um, video exchange, I guess, if you will, kind of through Zoom chat or 
FaceTime or whatever system will work best for setting yeah, whatever up. Whatever works best. We're going to get on a video call with you, sit down, watch you do your training session. And we can say, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop that right now before you create a bigger problem and then start doing it this way. So you get live real time feedback on what's going on in your training sessions. You can do that. Set up an appointment to do that once a week. And that can be a really powerful way of training your dog instead of shooting a video, posting the video. We're really good about watching those and getting back to you within 24 hours. But once you post it, we watch it. We were we reply with a post and then you read the reply. It's probably closer to 36 hours, maybe 48 hours for that whole circle of information to get passed around. A circle. Yeah. And so, um, if you've been doing more training sessions in that time, you could be compounding a problem. If it was a really big problem that we need to step in and say, Hey, wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. That's where that live video where we can step in and say, stop right now. What you're doing isn't going to be beneficial. Or we can say, Hey, your puppy's got this. Let's not, you know, beat a dead horse. Let's move on to the next step. Um, we don't want your puppy to get bored with training. So 100%, but no. to get to the question, yes. Um, it's, and it's a good one because a lot of people do in our opinion, utilize tone improperly as well as utilize the beeper function. Some callers, um, are going to also have a beeper function, which some of the DT systems callers that we use the wrap 1450, for example, has the beeper feature, which is supposed to be used for locating your dog in the field in thick cover or knowing when they're on point. Um, and some people use that beeper function as a warning for their dog and they'll beep, 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 beep their dog and their dog hightails it and turns around and comes back. So they're using it kind of for recall and, or having the dog check in with them, which isn't how it's intended to be used. So that then if you need to locate them or find if they're on point and they've been so conditioned that they recall at that point, well, we don't want them recalling and pulling off of birds or anything like that. No, no. And um, it's, it's one of those things that's going to be pretty easy to actually teach the beeper to become recalled just via just reps in general. So it's something you need to be aware of. You hit the beep, like, where are you at? Oh, you're not where I want you to be. And then immediately switch over and call them back your direction. And then the beep, like dogs anticipate the next thing you're going to do is call me to you. So you have to kind of watch that, but into tone specifically, we're going to utilize that tone um, as a similar mild negative reinforcement tool, um, just like we would utilize vibrate. Yeah. And so we would actually use tone for recall, not as a form of some kind of positive marker or something like that while the dog's in the field. No, but definitely it would be utilized the same as the vibrate, which with the vibrate on our collars, not only can the dogs feel the vibration of the collar, but they can hear that you know, buzzing of vibrate. Um, cause that box is right by their ear. Just like sometimes you can't feel your phone, but you hear it going. Exactly. So, um, that's utilizing two senses and with the tone, you're just utilizing one sense with the dog, but they're able to still put those pieces together and say, Oh, I turn this sound off by doing something that I already know. Now I've actually seen more recently that the vibrate is almost more aversive to dogs than, um, stimulation is on the collar. Like dogs are jumping out of their socks and freaking out because the vibrate on the collar turns on. And, um, if that's worked through improperly, it can actually create a problem. Um, but if it's worked through properly, it just shows that the vibrate can be an even more powerful tool that allows you to not have to use stimulation on the regular. You know, I mean, you have a dog that 100% responds to vibrate. You don't need anything else. Yeah. And actually in our last puppy training seminar, we worked with a whole bunch of different puppies and all of those clients had different e-collar systems. You know, some had collars from us, some had collars that they had purchased other places um, and different brands. So we were, you know, checking things. Um, and we even noticed from brand to brand, sometimes the vibrate on those collars is much more or less powerful. Um, you could really feel yeah, the difference on some of them. The Tritronics collar vibrate was almost nothing. I mean, it was like barely there. Yeah. Yep. So some of the dogs were like, I'm just ignoring this because it really doesn't matter. Um, and then we'd switch to a DT systems collar and the vibrate is a little more powerful. And they're like, 
oh, wake up. Hello, I'm listening yeah, I now. I can feel that and it gets my attention. And then was it a dog tray unit? I don't remember what the unit was. Something. It was like, like they pulled that vibrator from something else and put it in this e-collar just for the sake of getting a dog's attention. I mean, and it's. I, yeah. And I think there was also a collar that had tone that we yeah, were using the, as well. The Tritronics one used tone. Um, it had an interesting selector thing. So it kind of gave you like modes where you could select through different modes and you got Nick and then tone and vibrate, or you got Nick and continuous and tone, but there was no Nick and continuous and vibrate. Yeah. You couldn't function. get the, you couldn't get the three you might want all at the same time. You got the three that they were going to give you. You know, and I yeah, exactly. Now, definitely we have a bias because we've been utilizing DT systems collars for a very long time. They're a great company based out of Dallas. It's a small family run business. You know, I mean, they, um, they're good people and the equipment is really, really good. And we've been using it for a long time. So I'm going to feel most comfortable with what I've been using, but my goal with our seminars, Kat and my goal with our seminars is to be able to help you learn how to train your dog. And if you come in saying, this is my e-collar, I'm going to help you work through it. We're going to do the best that we can. Um, I can just immediately say, it's garbage, throw it away, buy a new one. Yeah, there are very few situations where we can't work with the collar system that you have to help you learn how to handle your dog with that system. I can probably count one time. Yeah, that I was, was like, probably the collar is too hot. Yep. Yeah. It was with little Odette yeah. and, um, their collar. Tritronics pro. Yeah. And you had to, something. you had to turn the dial to get from stimulation to vibrate and then yeah. push the same buttons. Um, and they only had levels one through six and they were pretty hot levels and pretty big jumps between each of those levels. And she was a little Brock Francais, pretty, um, soft as far as collar pressure went. And, just making slight handling errors by not turning back to vibrate and hitting the, you know, continuous on a one. She was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not ready for that. Um, so we actually found one of the DT systems callers, the MR 1100, which is super simple. And there's a button for continuous, a button for vibrate and a button for Nick. Yeah. There's three buttons. You, it's a small transmitter fits right in your hand. It's 16 levels. Super easy. Um, but really simple and easy to use. If you know where your buttons are, you really can't make a mistake um, by not turning that dial to the right level that you need to be at. So um, as well as it allows you to switch from vibrate to a level of stimulation, just like that, not with messing with a dial on the top. So that really worked, um, that recommendation, and they're very happy with that collar. Uh, but for the most part, we're able to utilize the collar systems that you come in with. Um, and when we train dogs for people, if they already have a collar system, we say, hey, bring your collar system with you when you pick up your dog so that I don't work with you and get you comfortable handling your dog on our system and then send you home and you're trying to, you're like, oh, I don't know what button to push and I don't know what level we were using. And, you know, I'm comparing apples to oranges and it's not making sense. So we want you to bring your collar system with when you pick up your dog so that you can feel comfortable working with the system you're going to have at home. Yeah. So we've covered a lot about collars and different setups and tones. Did we actually 100% answer the question? I think so. They were asking if they could use the tone function for recall or if they should use it more as a marker for positive reinforcement um, mm. from an extended distance. And if you're using 100%. some form of marker, yeah. you might as well just use a clicker. It's um, it's going to work better for you than having a collar and on them that they're hearing. Um, the clicker would be harder from a distance, I think. You know, that's what it was kind of mentioning. But at the same time, uh, when you're to that point, I mean, most of the time, uh, we're, we're not going to utilize a clicker either way. So yeah, once we're to the point of collar conditioning, um, and working through that conditioning process at a distance, we're not using clickers as markers. We're definitely not using the tone as a, as a marker. No. no. So yeah, you can use it. And anytime that we're showing in our videos vibrate, you would be able to utilize tone in that situation. Great question. It's a really good question. I think that that's probably all we're going to have time for in part two so that we don't get too long because this next question is going to be a long one. So make sure to tune in to part three so you don't miss what we're going to be talking about because it's a good one. We will see you in just a minute.